I have a bit of a confession to make. And it isn't it isn't a confession, it's more an admission of how I acted recently. I suppose in a sense it's 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 similar to what I spoke about recently in relation to my baby girl Kiva and me not and me thinking that she wasn't breathing and my knee jerk reaction being less than what you might call ideal. My knee jerk reaction when I thought she might have stopped breathing was don't die on my watch. And I explained in a previous episode, I'm not sure which one it was, that I'm not going to take ownership of that thought because that I don't hold my I don't hold myself accountable to every fleeting thought that pops into my head because I've often thought of, you know, smashing somebody's head in and that person might be a seven year old. But, you know, I've I I have never and would never act on the on certain things that have popped into my head from time to time. And that's look, it's just part of life. We we have these thoughts and we shouldn't hold ourselves accountable for every little fleeting thing that pops into our head. But anyway, I digress. Getting back to what I fucking wanted to say. I want to explain something that happened to me. And it involves someone that I'd mentioned before, uh, a guy called Quaylen Ward. I think I've got your name right this time around, Quaylen. Quaylen sent me an email there not so long ago, essentially saying that he'd been listening, he'd been enjoying the podcast, he'd heard me, you know, basically ask people to contact me if they were listening and enjoying it. He obliged, and that was fucking, that was class. I was delighted. I, I read it, and I was like, no fucking way. And I told herself immediately, as I always do, I was like, no way, I got another fucking email. Fucking this lad, and he said this, and, you know, fucking deadly. And the fucking mad bastard went the whole hog with the one or two steps further, and he supports me on Patreon. So, you know, double thumbs up again, uh, quite on. But getting back to... What happened to me recently? This is, I don't know, about a week ago or so, uh, maybe not even that long, the last couple of days, I was going into Woody's to get something. And I saw this guy, as I was reversing the van, or as I, as I stopped the van to reverse into a space, I saw this guy. And uh, he's a guy I know years, he's a, a, a guy a good bit older than me, he'd be probably, I don't know, in his 50s or 60s thereabouts. But I saw him, and he had this young lad with him. And I, Within a millisecond of seeing him, I was like, oh, that's obviously one of his three sons. And then I thought again, I was like, I know what two of his sons look like. And this guy isn't either of those guys. So it must be the other guy that I don't know, whose name's Quaylon, who's your man who sent me the email, who's your man who supports me on Patreon. And, it, and this all happened like in a, in a millisecond, in less than a blink of an eye, all this kind of came. And... It, you might think that my knee-jerk reaction would be to jump out of the van and fucking run over to him and go, well, man, fucking thanks a million, shake his hand, cheers for the support, cheers for the financial support and the words of encouragement. You know, we all thrive on encouragement, fair fucking play to you. You know, wouldn't it be great if there was more lads like you in the world? But no, 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 not me. My knee-jerk reaction was, oh, no, fuck. You know, don't make eye contact. Reverse the van as slowly as humanly possible, or whatever the fuck I was driving at the time, and just, you know, just busy yourself on your phone, or pretend something's wrong in the van, or just, you know, just avoid contact at, at all cost. And reverse the van, kind of did whatever I did, got out, and sure enough, he'd hopped into his car and was, was driving off, and I kind of went, oh, phew, that was a fucking close one. So went home anyway after I got whatever I was looking to get in Woody's, and I said it to herself. And she just looked at me and went like, why didn't you just, you know, not be such a wanker and say hello and thank him and, you know, not be all fucking weird about it. And I was like, I, I don't, I don't really know. And I've been thinking about it since. I was like, what the fuck was it that was in me? I mean, when he emailed me, I was fucking delighted with myself. Absolutely delighted with myself. And then I started thinking, is this a new age thing whereby... We prefer contact via screens and, you know, many miles of separation than face-to-face -face contact. Is this social media ruining people's lives again? But I didn't think it was that. And I don't think it was that. 
because if somebody was to email me and say, listen, I've been listening to your podcast, I think you're full of shit, I think you're trying to con people into pay, giving you money on Patreon, I think you're an asshole and I would love nothing more than to hear you or you'd stop doing what you were doing. That person I'd sooner meet. I'd much prefer to hear somebody say that to my face than to get it in an email. So it's not that I want all my correspondence to be, you know, digital, not by any stretch of the imagination. And then I was thinking, maybe it's just because I'm an introverted person. And like, don't get me wrong, I enjoy talking to people, obviously. I sit down and talk to people fucking for hours and hours on end regularly as often as fucking possible not as often as i'd like i don't have a podcast up this week that's not because i'm inundated with people who want to talk to me but that's that was my knee-jerk reaction and i've been trying to kind of figure that out in my head as to what it was and I, I i think it's because what he said was complimentary because and i don't know if this is an irish thing or just a human thing that we can't take a compliment and I'd be very interested to hear if anybody listening has any kind of thoughts on 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 what I'm on what I'm saying. Like, like what is it about me that couldn't couldn't just take the fucking compliment, basically? And I think Irish people at least will 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 get that. Nobody really likes being told they're brilliant, or do they? Or is that indicative of the type of personality that I have? Or, or what is that? I, I I really don't know. And I hate to think that my saying this would deter other people from approaching me and saying, you know, oh, well, lad, you might know me, but I've been listening to your podcast and I really like it. Because I want that. Like, not that I want it, but I mean, I, I'd hate to think that somebody listened to this and then maybe bumped into me or saw me and didn't say, and didn't, you know, say hi because of what I'm saying now. But I suppose I have a a long history of being terrible with names and worse with faces and it, it, it has happened to me regularly over the years that you know oh well Frano how are you getting on long time no see oh, <laughs> hey fella what's the what's the crack Jesus you know when was the when was the last time we we spoke you know anything to try and fucking get some information out of you to figure out who the fuck it is that I'm speaking to and like, what should somebody do in that situation? Should I turn around and go, sorry man, I actually have no idea who you are? Because to, to me, that would strike me as being quite rude. But what's better, to be rude or disingenuous? That's an interesting one. Okay, you're better off being, like I'm a, I would be a big proponent of being honest. I think that lying, it just, it just, fucking ruins everything and it relationships between men and women i think lying and not expressing yourself and by and by not expressing yourself i don't mean necessarily not talking about your feelings but my brother pat would be big into this idea that you should have nothing to hide and i'd be a, a massive proponent of that i think that's evident in the solo episodes where I essentially broadcast my internal dialogue something not too many people are willing to do and for good reason a lot of the time I think or maybe not for good reason maybe for terrible reasons maybe if more people did these kind of monologue podcasts or things if only to listen back to them themselves even if they weren't to upload them but there's something very I don't know, freeing or refreshing about doing them. But just, you know, putting yourself out there and putting, collecting your fucking thoughts and having people come back to you and say, remember you were saying this about that? Well, I think this. And you're like, fuck, I'd forgotten I'd said that even. And you're right. Uh, I, I was wrong about that. I, I agree with you now in hindsight. Or, no, I'm, I'm going to stick to my guns here. I think... I think you're looking at this incorrectly and here's my reasons why and you know God knows or God knows a, a conversation might fucking break out like a, a, an actual conversation not just fucking chit chat 
Not just fucking noises we make with our fucking mouths. Actual conversation. Where there's like, you know, a, a net benefit. And I think the more that we, the more that we express ourselves, the more we realise, I suppose, what we're, what we're interested in. Like, put it this way. Ask yourself this. If you were to start recording yourself, if you were to start opening up the app on your phone, hitting record, and just talking, what would you talk about? And don't get caught up in, in the initial, you hit record, and you're like, yeah. you know, you, you, don't, you, you might think you have nothing to say. You might think you have nothing to say, but your, your internal dialogue is fucking chattering away 100 miles an hour, 24 hours a day. So you, you have plenty to, you might not have plenty to say, but you have plenty to think. And you think all the time. And it's those thoughts that you want to start saying. Because who knows what you'd end up talking about. And it might take you 50 or 100 recordings to actually kind of get out of your own way and be able to do this, to be able to talk. But wouldn't it be interesting to just do it, even privately? just to see what it is that you talk about. Because a lot of people don't even know what their own interests are. And one thing that I've noticed about the conversations that I've been having with people and the ones that I've been having with myself, say, is that I might be a lot of things, but one thing that I'm certainly not is one-dimensional. And I actually see, or I'm beginning to think, say, that that's a big problem in our society is that people go to college and you know they either get a degree or a master's or a PhD but it, it leaves them very one-dimensional so if you've if you have a qualification as I don't know a, a fucking geologist you might be ready willing and able to jump into a conversation about rocks and stuff but not necessarily about, you know, medicine or pharmaceuticals or, I was going to say drugs, but the three of them are essentially the same thing. But, you know, I don't know, fucking hunting or gun control or democracy or the lack of it or social media or whatever the fuck it is. Because there's this, there's this idea of, no, that that's not my area of expertise. Personally, I think that you should have as many areas of expertise as humanly possible. Now, granted, there's kind of a law of diminishing returns there. The more you know about the more subjects, the less you can know about each individual subjects. But realistically, like, what are the odds that you're going to be an actual world-class expert in any given field? Slim to fuck all, really. And even if you do become that, I think that there's much better utility in being a, like a broad achiever as opposed to a narrow achiever, intellectually speaking or philosophically speaking. I think, you're, I think people typically are better served by having a wide range of interests. And that runs contrary to, I suppose, our schooling system, our educational system. That's all, that's all driven towards narrowing your field. Typically in college, you, you pick a course. Let's say it's psychology. So already you've narrowed down your field of study to, to one thing, as broad as psychology might be. But as you progress through your years, you're constantly narrowing down and honing in on, on the one thing. And that's great. If you want to become you know, a, a research scientist of some description, that's, that's exactly what you need to do. But I don't think that we're all research scientists. I think that, we're, again, we're just better served by, by keeping things that bit broader. Like the, the, and don't get me wrong, there's great utility in, in being an expert in certain things, but not at the expense of being well-rounded. And I, I don't mean to neglect focus here. And what I mean by that is, is there, I don't know, maybe there's an analogy there. I'm just thinking out loud here. Think of a magnifying glass. So you know the way that you can burn a piece of paper with a magnifying glass in the sun. So take the, the width of your magnifying glass. 
the wider being the better because the the wider it is the more sunlight that it can focus and I think there's an analogy there between the width of the magnifying glass and your range of interest the more range the more the broader your range of interests the more you know about more and more topics the better you are at focusing in on the one thing because here's here's maybe a better analogy you're not feeling well you just you don't feel yourself you're tired you're you know constantly run down and you, you know it, it's not that you have a, a pain in your left side or a headache it's it's nothing like that it's just an all round you just don't feel like you're you're operating properly you go to a priest and you know he'll ask you when was the last time you were in mass and you go oh, I haven't been in mass since I was dragged kicking and screaming by my parents and he'll go well there you go you know you're 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 at sea spiritually and you go okay right you say the same thing to a psychiatrist and he'll probably tell you that the reason that you're feeling that is because there's an imbalance of neurochemicals because neurochemicals are what make you feel good or bad and if you feel constantly kind of bland and meh that means that there's there's something off there so he might fucking prescribe you pres meh, he might prescribe you something you go to some sort of a fitness guru he'll ask you when was the last time you went for a run he'll ask you when was the last time you you know built up a a sweat or elevated your heart rate so you go to all these independent experts and they're all going to give you an answer in their given field of expertise kind of obviously you know let's say you've a pain in your back you go to a fucking chiropodist and he'll tell you you've got you know either a, some sort of a fallen arch or that you lean in too much on one side of your foot and that's putting pressure on the muscles in your legs and it's it's making you lean forward and it's giving you a pain in your back but you go to a chiropractor and you know he'll tell you something different not that anybody should go to chiropractors by the way that's a bogus non-medical discipline a solo podcast on chiropractors and what's that other thing that came up with myself and joy homeopathy yeah those fuckers need their own independent podcasts but anyway i digress as always yeah, so apologies, Quailon, if you... I don't even know if you fucking saw me or not. I absolutely saw you if you weren't sure if I saw you and pretended that I didn't see you. Um, but again, I, I hope that didn't come across as me being an arrogant or rude bastard. Or maybe that makes me an arrogant and rude bastard. I don't know, but it certainly wasn't intentional. But yeah, enough ranting over for today. I'll chat you soon. Oh, but before I let you go, any um, questions, queries, comments etc to i'm off the lead at gmail.com and you can support me as always at www.patreon.com forward slash off the lead chat you soon